My healthy habits. Surprise is the only We're emotion an that requires an interpretation. Oh, Wherever we go, it's a real choice. We, go we can change this. What life to do. Thank you. When it comes to the environment, we Americans we love to volunteer. Millions of us recycle. We grow our own herbs and vegetables, and heck, we even clean those beloved parks and hiking trails. But have you given much thought to the ultimate act of environmental volunteerism? You know, that one gift you give after you die? Well, I have, and that's because for nearly 30 years I've worked in the death care industry. Since becoming a funeral home owner in 2005, my mission. Has been to literally educate the public about the importance of literally going green as their last heroic act of environmental volunteerism. So my career—it's a calling far greater than me. It's predestined, perhaps, and that's because as a child, loss defined my world. Over a brief span of three years, in the home we all shared. One family member after the next died. When I was six, my paternal grandmother passed. At eight, my mother, and about six months after my mother, my paternal grandfather. By the time I was nine, I had been to so many funerals. I became something of a accidental expert. So since the age of thirteen, I knew I wanted to work in the funeral industry. So when I finally found the courage to confess this secret wish to my dad, he paused and said, "Not only is mortuary science a very narrow career field, but you probably won't be able to get a date to save your life." <laughs> True. So the first 15 years of my career, I worked in the corporate funeral business. Out of all my responsibilities. Selling graves and merchandise—they were my least favorite. Upselling a family deep in the throes of grief—that was the worst. Each time I tried to sell, I felt pathetic twice: once in front of the grieving family, and again when management pointed out my low casket sales at our weekly meetings. In fact, I despise this type of sales so deeply that when the chance to take over a rural and dilapidated And financially failing funeral home in boring Oregon arose. Oh, I leapt at the chance! I could not wait to run things my way. <laughs> so not long after I took over, I received a phone call from a woman, and she wanted to discuss funeral arrangements for her friend Wanda, who passed away that morning. Oh, I loved Wanda's people. They were the close-knit group of gentle souls. So while filling out the death certificate, they were stumped as to why they weren't allowed to list Wanda's occupation as wanderer and her industry as the earth. After all, that's how she saw herself. So they called me because they wanted to honor Wanda the wanderer by laying her to rest on the rural 15-acre goddess commune where she had lived. But there was just one. Tiny little question: Was it legal to bury a loved one on residential property? Ah. So to find out, I called the local zoning department and discovered private land burials in Wanda's County are indeed permissible and easy to obtain. So I lined up a backhoe and an operator for the following morning, and while he was excavating. We prepared ourselves for the fitting ceremony that afternoon. Wanda's service—it was—it was just top drawer. Her friends and family—they chanted, they shared funny stories, they spoke of her kindness, and they were just wonderful. You know, we held hands to form a circle around her final resting place, and we stood in silence as her three sons lowered her. Just gently into the ground. Shovel by shovel, Wanda's body was covered with damp, earthy, just like aromatic soil, brimming with life force. In fact, this simple act—it felt a lot like planting a tree, 
offering up all that promise and all that renewal that comes along with it. Wanda's friends and family, they conducted her funeral their way. You know, I could see and feel how much comfort and closure staying with Wanda from her last breath until their final goodbye had brought them. And participating in an old-fashioned burial, it made me feel as if I had discovered something new. Because most of my corporate career, I had that nagging feeling that the impersonal nature of the traditional burial experience was falling short for the mourners. But on this day, I truly felt that I had helped those left behind complete the cycle of life, the way nature's grand design had intended it, to honor the loved one, while at the same time giving back to Mother Earth. About a week after the burial, I received a phone call from the family sharing their comfort that her body was now at one with the bio network. And their call, it had meant so much to me because in all my years in the funeral industry, no one had ever reached out to say, thank you. It was always a financial transaction. The payment was considered the thank you. People I talk with, they are often surprised to learn that they have the right to ask questions and do things their way. And when they realize this, they'll ask, well, can I make my own casket? Is it possible to be buried on my own acreage? Is an unembalmed body good for the environment? Well, the answer, yes, yes, and yes. Green burials, they make so much sense. We came from nature, and nature, it's where we return. In fact, over 150 years ago, green burials were the only option. That's until embalming was introduced during the Civil War. However, it wasn't until 1865 when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated and consequently embalmed that this new arsenic, mercury, soap and water body preservation process, it took center stage. And so the public could mourn Lincoln's body traveled over 1,600 miles by presidential train through 180 cities and seven different states. As a result of the extended publicity, the death care industry, it was born. That was it. But by the early 1900s, embalming fluid had, had to be reformulated because hundreds of medical students they were falling deathly ill as a result of dissecting arsenic-laden cadavers. The replacement, the embalming fluid we use today, formaldehyde. Essentially, we swapped one set of hazardous problems for another. And since the practice of embalming began in the 1860s, millions of bodies continue to leave a toxic black mark on the ecosystem in ways we rarely discuss. And modern cemeteries, they're not any better. In the US, there are one million acres of tainted soil that pose a laundry list of potential groundwater problems. So at the top, steel caskets. Over time, they degrade, releasing harmful toxins into the soil. And additionally, casket manufacturers, they use a spray on varnishes and sealers to coat the wood coffins. Some of the chemicals used, they're among the EPA's 50 top hazardous waste generators. Now, when it comes to the steel in the ground, there is an estimated 115 million tons of it. That's enough to rebuild the Golden Gate Bridge annually, annually. So that brings me to this. Approximately 30% of the population is buried in a casket each year, which is roughly 900,000 people. What if this population opted for a green burial and donated the steel intended for their caskets to repair or rebuild our nation's estimated 56,000 failing bridges? What a fabulous way. Yes, yes. It's a fabulous way to honor your legacy for generations to come. Okay, so while it's true that the popularity of traditional casket burials is on the decline, its replacement is cremation, which not only poisons the earth, 
but it's also hazardous to the ozone layer. For example, many decedents, they have teeth with mercury fillings. Wood coffins and bodies, they turn to ash. And those tainted particles, the varnish, the chemicals, the mercury, they just sort of float through the air, landing in our farmlands and our parklands and on our oceans. And they taint the food supply of our wildlife and our little pets and ourselves. Oh, and thinking about sprinkling grandma's ashes in the garden? Think again. Ashes do not decompose. They're high in salt and they are nutrient deficient. Place grandma's ashes on your favorite plant and you will certainly kill it. <laughs> what a hell of a way to remember grandma! We can do so much better. Why not celebrate a life well lived by helping to heal the planet? Some of the ways that we can leave a greener footprint are to choose a biodegradable casket made of wool or wicker or cardboard. How about a pod made from newspaper, an all natural fabric shroud, or a simple yet elegant pine casket? No acreage? No problem. Consider a conservation burial to help set aside parkland for all eternity. A few years back, I was talking to my father about Chicago, his hometown. He reminisced about attending church, his childhood home, and for the first time, he mentioned the family funeral parlor, where he'd spent countless hours playing hide-and-seek with his cousin. I could not believe my ears. I thought to myself, did my dad just say family funeral parlor? Four generations back, he said. 1915, my great-aunt Mary was the first female in Illinois history to receive a mortician's license. The three sons, and they followed in her footsteps. And even today, Mary's descendants, they run the place. Well, the profession has skipped a generation with me. But you should know, you are the fourth generation of morticians on my mother's side. <laughs> Seriously, Dad? <laughs> Why on earth did you wait all these years to tell me? Well, the hours are long and the pay is lousy, he said. I thought your life would be better if you did something else. Huh. Guess I was wrong. <laughs> oh, my wonderful daddy. My wonderful daddy. He recently passed away. And when it came to his burial, he had two simple requests. The first was to have a mass given by the Monsignor at the cathedral in downtown Portland. And the second, to be buried next to my mom and his parents. Yes, the burial was green. I chose a non-toxic wood casket reminiscent of mom's. Dad wore a 100% biodegradable wool suit, and we skipped embalming. Surprising, since it's the Catholic Church? Perhaps. The good news is, Pope Francis is both a huge supporter of the environment and green burial. The truth is, as an undertaker, I assist the living far more than the dead. Over the years, I've learned death is here to teach us about loss, about letting go, but most importantly, about living. And perhaps one of the most important facts of living is understanding that one day each one of us will die. Most likely while you've been here on planet Earth, you've lived responsible, sustainable, conscientious lives. So I challenge you, why not continue that trend until the end? 
My dream is that green burials become the go-to choice for life's last stop. And I believe when we rebrand the narrative around death, one day going green will be considered the standard and our last great heroic act of environmental volunteerism. Thank you.